Hey everybody, so you've seen the live streams for the Cosplay 600. If you haven't, click up here and uh, watch those first and then come back to this video because I'm going to talk about where I am now. So where I am now is I've got the Cosplay 600 running. Seems to print just fine. I have printed everything from uh, Little Martians, what you saw in the live stream, and I have printed XYZ cubes for calibration and these are finely tuned at this point. And at this point, I am down to trying to print, you know, actual figures. And these guys are not turning out so well. I am getting a lot of ringing, which is to be expected because I'm moving a large amount of mass. Uh, that big 600 by 400 bed, that's a lot of mass to move around. And um, so I will show you these close up. But if you look at the first one I printed, which is my orange Charizard here, um, you'll notice that it has a lot of ringing, like pretty much creates a scale around the entire Charizard, um, and it's on all surfaces. Uh, this was printed at 100 millimeters per second, basically just to see if I could. I wanted to see if the printer could move that fast, and it can, so, so that's a good first start. So and then I, I slowed it down a bit, and this blue sort of headless Charizard, because I ran out of test filament, um, and the ringing's much better on this guy, but it's still not great. And this was printed half the speed, 50 millimeters per second. Um, this could be acceptable for cosplay because I probably could uh, sand down these sides or, or put putty on them or whatever. But it's really not what I'm going for. I'm going for a printer that can print props, low layer height, at a decent rate of speed. Not super fast. I don't have to go 100 millimeters per second but at a decent rate of speed to actually, um, you know, produce good looking props and then they can be finished, then they can be made to look better. I don't want to have to spend any more time sanding than I have to. Otherwise, why have the big printer just print it in multiple pieces uh, and get better quality? So anyway, what are we going to do about it? Well, the original design of this printer was designed to where I could do ball screws. That was the original plan. And so I had bought a 1605 ball screw here from Ziltec. And this is a beautiful ball screw. And if I was doing something like CNC, this would be perfect. But I found very quickly, that's what I had installed first. And what I found very quickly was that that ball screw, just too slow. Um, five millimeter pitch on that was just painfully slow. It took 640 uh, steps of that stepper motor to go around. Um, one time and so that wasn't going to, to cut it so what I have done is temporarily I went back to the the belt and so I went with a dual belt drive on the cosplay 600 that's what I'm running now that's what produced these Charizards and what's giving me the problems something I was aware of I'm not a huge fan of belts particularly when moving around a large amount of mass I know there's going to be ringing but what I'm hoping is now that I've ordered a 1610 ball screw, which has twice the pitch of that 1605, I'm hoping now I've got the torque, I've got the turning power, and I've got the speed still in order to actually print fast while moving around this much mass uh, and still produce high quality prints. So what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to be switching out the belt drive that's currently on this, the dual belts, and I'm gonna switch that out for a single 1610 ball screw. And we're gonna find out, does switching out the belts for a ball screw, does that solve my problem? Does it have that big of an impact on quality? And that's what I'm doing today here on Curzy Fabrications. Let's go. my original plan was to do the ball screw and not to do belts at all. So as you can see, I already have this piece designed that actually mounts the ball screw mount to it. Um, so this is ready to go. Uh, from there, all I need to do is mount the motor, uh, which will drive the ball screw. And I've got this really high torque. This is about the biggest NEMA 17 you can buy. Um, so I'm going to mount that there get this going and um, you saw the results from the belt drive let's get this swapped out then I'm going to print out another Charizard or two same speeds 
We're going to see if the ball screw actually made any difference for the performance and the quality of this machine. Let's get going. With that the physical modification to the machine are done the only thing we have to worry about at this point is is there enough current going to the stepper motor so that it doesn't skip the only thing we have to change software wise is we need to go into marlin and change the steps per millimeter uh, for the y-axis so that it knows how far to turn the screw in order to go one millimeter of distance uh, for that let's go to the whiteboard so up here on the board i've got all the math you need for a 1610 ball screw First, we know that the standard stepper motor has 200 steps per revolution. We know that we've got a uh, driver micro step set at 1 16th. This is gonna greatly depend on the stepper driver you have and which board you're using. And then we have the screw pitch, which is 10 millimeters. So using those numbers, we take our 200, we multiply it times 16 because now we're micro stepping that, uh, that stepper motor. And then we divide by 10 because that's how many millimeters we're moving in that uh, revolution. So we need to change our software to 320 steps per millimeter. And we can go to Marlin and do that. We can either do it from the menu or we can do it from a, a computer interface if we have that set up. I'll show you how to do it from the menu. So here I am at the Marlin interface on the printer. I'm going to go to the control menu, uh, motion and all the way down to steps per millimeter and then the y steps per millimeter because that is my y axis and then this is going to take a minute so here is my phone interface because I'm tired of waiting I'm going to do M92 which is set axis steps per millimeter And then I'm going to do Y 320. And press the play button. Now we've set it. And I'm actually going to store that as M500, which stores my parameters. Now, if we go back into the control settings, we should see those motion settings. Steps per millimeter. Uh, Y steps, 320. We're all set and ready to go. Let's see if the printer moves the way it should. Back at the printer, let's see if it will auto home or if it screams at us because it doesn't have the horsepower to do it. Well, there we go. So we need to increase the uh, horsepower there. It's not going to work. Nope. But it turns out the acceleration was just turned up too high. It was turned up to a thousand. It obviously can't accelerate that fast due to the mass it's moving. Halved it to 500, seems to be working fine. Now it's homing. It was all the way up, it takes a while. All right, there we go. 
So let's move it around a little bit, see how it moves. Repair, move access, move Y, 10 at a time. Looking pretty good. So let's try a test print. So I went to print my test print here and I find out real fast that the printer won't do an auto level procedure. Turns out I still had one more setting I needed to change in the Marlin source code. There is a setting called XY underscore probe underscore speed. By default, that setting is at 8,000 millimeters per minute, which is way too fast for this printer. I have that to uh, 4,000 and it didn't have any problems. And then I was able to get on with my test print from that point on. So here you'll see I actually did two test prints. I did an orange one and then a pink one. The orange one was done with 1 16th micro stepping. Figured out that that's probably too fast. I don't need 320 steps. And I changed that to 1 8th micro stepping, which halved my micro steps and gave the uh, motor some extra torque. We'll see the results in just a minute. So new day, new morning. The pink Charizard is done printing. So taking a look at this guy, you'll notice that probably like halfway up this Charizard, you'll notice the same sort of artifacts we were seeing even when we were going fast. And uh, so his back is, is very curved and the tail is very wonky. Um, but if you notice about halfway up or so, it starts getting nice again and uh, more of my edges are straight like they should be. It's still not perfect. I'm still missing steps. One thing I realized though was that uh, I, I, during the print I was seeing the same artifacts. I'm like, why are we still missing steps when we're going slower? Took a, took a look at the stepper on the y-axis and realized it was running hot. Uh, at that point I checked the voltage on that stepper, realized it was way higher than it needed to be. I just went in while it was running and turned down the voltage on that stepper so that it cooled it down and, um, and, and made it run cooler. And I think that's where some of those lost steps were found again. And I'm actually pretty happy with this print. It, like I said, it's obviously not perfect. I'm still not getting real straight lines like I should be. But the, um, the quality of the surfaces is, is much improved. And in fact, you can actually kind of see some ringing, but uh, while this process hasn't been a complete success, I will say getting rid of the ringing has been a success. While if you look really closely, you can still see some waviness. It's nowhere near what it was with the belts. So I think I'm on the right track. That's going to be it for this video though. I've done enough test prints. I've shown you the process of converting the printer to a uh, ball screw. So that's where I was going to end the last video. Uh, I was going to leave it there. I had some pretty good Charmander prints here. Uh, and overall these Charmanders do look great. And, um, but there was still a lot of wobble on what should be straight lines uh, going down his back. So after I, after I cut the camera on that last one, I spent the evening trying to figure out what was going on. And the first thing I found was the coupler on the y-axis was loose, uh, just loose enough to where it was catching most of the time, but it wasn't always catching. And so you'd get these slight slips when the torque was high enough. So I tightened that up. Next thing I noticed was that on the y-axis, I was using a TMC2208 stepper in standalone mode. So in standalone mode, those steppers use stealth chop and the stealth chop mode doesn't have as much torque as the spread cycle mode. So what I did is I had to take the standalone 2208, had to follow the tutorial to actually switch that uh, using one-time programming over to the spread cycle mode. And once I got those dialed in, then I no longer had any torque problems on that axis. Well, I was gonna go straight into the large print. I wanted to show you the real payoff here. 
These are two Charmanders. The first, one on the left was the original one printed at 50 millimeters per second with the belts. The one on the right is the one printed 50 millimeters per second with the ball screw. Notice that it virtually eliminates the ringing on this print. And here we have 100 millimeter per second. The one on the left is the original belt uh, Charmander, and the one on the right is the one with the ball screw. Notice I've still got plenty of printing artifacts that I have to work out on this newly designed printer, but the ball screw definitely takes care of the ringing in the print, so mission accomplished. As you can see behind me, I went ahead and did a large print to test it out top to bottom uh, and the full depth of the Y-axis. And so that's what we have here. We have a large vase mode print. Um, Overall, I think the quality is great on this. The surfaces look great, but uh, there are some issues with the size of it. We have some of the more steep angles. They're not solid. You can see uh, some stringing. So I think some of that can be compensated using the linear advance features in Marlin. Um, I'll play with those settings and we'll see how that works out. Now, obviously we have Jaina here. Jaina wanted to see if she could pull this off the print plate because she thought it was such a cool looking print. So Jaina, We've got a couple of tools here. We have the one I suggest, which is the scraper, and then she wanted to try. The spatula. Yes, we have a kitchen spatula because it's such a big print. She thought we would need a little bit, something larger to get this and off. And it would be more fun. And let's not forget the fun. And we thought it would be easy to use the scraper to pull it up, and then we pull it all the way up with the spatula. Okay, so let's get started. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Be careful. Here, let me help you get under there. There you go. You hear that? Is that good? Yeah, that's a, that's a good sound. Okay, so why don't I'll hold this and you try to get the spatula under there. It's under right here. Uh huh. Ooh, I think it's working. It's working. That's such a good sound. This is really awesome. <laughs> okay, be careful at this point. We don't want to break it because we're almost there. Almost there. We just gotta get the center. Safety first, kids. We'll do it together. How about that? So, why don't you do the honors? Take it off the bed. Ooh, let's look at the bottom. Look at the bottom. How does it look? Oh my gosh, it feels so amazing! It feels so good. So let's take a look at this. Look, I can get this. Ooh, the feel and it's shiny. So this is one of the reasons you print with glass. If you print with glass, you get this nice mirror finish on the bottom. Okay, so what do you think? What do you think about the the quality of the overall print as I spin it I around? See, like, but those are normal for 3D printing. Yeah. And I really like the three-sided pumps. It's a really nice design. Mm -hmm. And I really like I'll the I'll link color. to the design in the description. This was all Thingiverse. Yeah, and the line, and like um, the color is so good. Yeah, it looks like, it looks like that, but it How's it look? So it looks much, like red on, on the, it on the so spool. It looks better on here. It looks like a fire color. I like that. It's really nice. So looking at the quality, I would say there is minimal ringing on some of these hard edges, um, but nothing at all like what we were seeing with the belt drive. And on some of the really steep edges here, since this was printed in base mode, they're a little thin. I'm not too worried about it. Like I said, um, I think that they're, they're expected for something this size. Okay. So it can be used for a lot of things. It can even be used for gold. Useful 3D prints. Useful. Okay, so from here, I think it's about time to print something for cosplay since that's what this printer was for, so that's what's going on next. Uh, let me know what you think about this print. This print? Yes, let me know what you think about this print now that she can talk better than I can in the comments below. That's it for this video. Smash that like button. Subscribe. Thanks for watching Crazy Fabrications. We'll see you all next time. Bye.